Hello, my name is Jennifer. Welcome back to my channel. This is my favourite books of 2021. So just to explain, this is not books that have been published in 2021. This is the books that I have read in 2021 and these are my favourites. Um, of this list, there is actually only one that was published in 2021. We have three works in translation. We have genres including mystery, horror, fantasy, historical fiction, literary fiction. There's a short story collection and there's even a classic which was originally published over 200 years ago. In terms of authors, we have authors from Japan, Sweden and Iran, Sri Lanka, Canada, Nigeria. Um, there are 12 books in this list. I only started my channel in August, so actually there's a number of these that I haven't spoken about yet and I'm very excited to do so. Um, in terms of how I have painstakingly curated this list of my favourite books, um, it was actually quite easy because I've read a lot of books this year, but there's actually only 12 books that I, I have given five stars. So those are the ones that I am going to talk about. In at number 12 is I'm Thinking of Ending Things by Ian Reid. So this is a weird book. I read this in an afternoon. It's about maybe 200 pages long at the most. We follow our main character who is driving home to visit his parents with his girlfriend. Um, I think it's the first time that his girlfriend is going to be meeting his parents. Um, we follow them as they're driving. It's a really like stormy night, snowy. The girlfriend is thinking of ending the relationship, hence the title of the book. Um, they go to visit the parents and everything. As the reader, you get the sense that everything is just slightly off kilter, but you can't quite put your finger on why. Um, this is quite a dark book, quite disturbing. I know some people don't like the ending of this book. I quite liked it, I think. Um, but I can totally see why people don't like it. I'd be interested to think what I think of this on a reread, but I really liked it. I gave it five stars, that's why it's on the list. And actually, straight after what, um, reading the book, I actually watched the film of the book, which I really liked. Um, I think the film does something really interesting um, with the book, and the last half hour of the film is wild. Next up is What We Owe by Golnaz Hashemzada Bond, who is a Swedish Iranian author. And this was um, translated from the Swedish by Elizabeth Clark Wessel. So, this is a book that I knew nothing about before reading it, and I've never heard anyone else mention it. Um, so, let me know if you've read it. This is an odd little book. So, our main character, Nahid, is in her 50s or 60s I think and we know right from the start of the book that she has only six months left to live. Um, throughout the book she reflects back on her life growing up originally in Iran. Um, she was involved in the revolution, she ended up fleeing with her husband um, to seek refuge in Sweden. Um, she has an uh, a grown-up daughter who grew up in Sweden and who is um, herself now pregnant. We see Nahid as she comes towards the end of her life reflecting back on her time in Iran, on the violence, on the trauma that she suffered and we see her reflecting on the differences between her life growing up in Iran and her daughter's life growing up in Sweden. There's a lot about motherhood, about grief and regret. Um, it's again a really quick read, a really unusual book. I raced through it and I absolutely loved it. At number 10 is a Mystery. This is Gentlemen and Players by Joanne Harris. So, Gentlemen and Players is set in a fictional school called St Oswald's, which is a boys' private school in the north of England. We follow um, a couple of different perspectives. Um, one of the perspectives is someone called The Mole. We don't know who they are, but we know it's one of the new teachers who started to work at the school in September in the new term. We know that The Mole is there to seek revenge against the school, but we don't know why they want to seek revenge and we don't know what form that revenge will take. Throughout the book we have a slow build-up of intrigue and tension. We, th 
the, the, the school setting is really well done. Joanne Harris used to be a teacher herself. Um, and I think that comes through in the novel. The observations are spot on. Um, the characters are great. It's really plotty. I thoroughly enjoyed it, raced through it, and I'm really looking forward to reading more in that series. In at number nine is Lonely Castle in the Mirror by Mizuki Sujimura, which is translated from the Japanese by Philip Gabriel. <clears throat> so this is a fantasy book which was translated into English this year, 2021. So we follow Kokoro, who is a young, well, she's a school age uh, girl. And one day she is at home from school. She's not attending school for reasons we find out. And the mirror in her bedroom glows. She goes into the mirror and she ends up in this castle. And in the castle, she encounters, I think, seven other children who've had a similar thing happen to them. They've ended up in this castle. They are greeted by this character called the Wolf Queen, who is a young girl in a wolf mask. And the Wolf Queen explains to them um, why they're in the castle. She explains the, the challenge. They have to find this key. The key will grant them a wish, but once that happens, then their memories of the castle will be erased. Um, this is a wonderful, wonderful book. We see the characters get to know each other. They are trying to figure out why they've been brought to the castle. Why not any other children? Why them? They are figuring out what, what connects them, what they have in common. And the book goes in directions I wasn't expecting. It was surprising. It was twisty. It was honestly such a wonderful, wonderful read. At number eight, we have a horror classic. This is Rosemary's Baby by Ira Levin. I love this book. I've never seen the film. I'd be interested to watch the film, but I think I'd be too scared to watch it. Um, so you probably know the plot of Rosemary's Baby. We follow Rosemary and her husband who move into an apartment building in New York and their neighbours are acting kind of strangely. Rosemary becomes pregnant and then the neighbours take even more of an interest in Rosemary and her unborn child. Um, this was a creepy read, um, quite disturbing and I thoroughly enjoyed it. At number seven is My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. So we follow Vanessa when she is in her 30s, I think, and she is reflecting back um, to when she was, I think, 15 years old and she had a relationship with her English teacher. This English teacher has, in the current day, been accused of uh, sexual assault by, um, by a current pupil. So we see Vanessa as she is trying to reconcile her own memories of what happened to her and the narrative that she has told herself about what happened to her with what this man has now been accused of. And as the story goes on, we see Vanessa reframing for herself the narrative as to what actually happened. Um, it, this was quite a difficult read. It had, in many ways, the propulsion of a thriller. Um, it was a real page turner, but very, um, very difficult to read, but really, really thought provoking and definitely one I would recommend. At number six is Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. So before going into this book, I only knew what everyone knows about Frankenstein, which is like, I know Frankenstein isn't the monster himself. I know he's a scientist. I didn't really know anything about the story. Um, this is a really quite a short book and having read it I can see why it is called Frankenstein because it is largely about Victor Frankenstein, the scientist. A lot of, a fair amount of what happens with the monster takes place off page. We see there's some 
interesting use of narrative voices throughout there is a part where we do hear from the monster creature himself we hear how he has tried to um i don't know connect with humans and they have misinterpreted his actions and this has then caused him to act in 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 ways that he has this is a book that I will definitely reread in future. I think it packs so much into shut, such a short novel. It's really well written and I think definitely a new favourite for me. In at number five is a short story collection, Revenge by Yoko Ogawa, translated from the Japanese by Stephen Snyder. So I actually read three books by Yoko Ogawa this year. I read The Memory Police, Housekeeper and the Professor and Revenge. Re Revenge was my absolute favourite. So this is 11 short stories which are all interconnected in some way or another. It might be by a repeated motif throughout the stories. In some cases it's a side character in one story becomes the protagonist of another story. It's weird, it's unsettling, it's disturbing, it's dark and I thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed it. In at number four is a book that I read right at the start of the year, and that's The Magus by John Fowles. So this is really quite a long book. This is over 600 pages long. And I remember when I read this that I didn't want it to end, which I think is a sign of a good book. This, again, is quite a weird, like, messing with your mind type of book. So our main character is Nicholas, who goes to work as a teacher on a Greek island while he's there he befriends this wealthy recluse who lives on the island and we see their say relationship it's not relationship relationship but their connection and we see their relationship play out we as the reader and as with Nicholas as well, we don't really understand what's going on. We don't know what's real and what's not. We don't know what is being created as a facade for Nicholas. He doesn't know what's going on. He doesn't know what's real and what's not. It's a really bizarre, strange book, but I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. And now we're down to my top three. Um, so in terms of how I've put these into an order, from 12 to 4, I have kind, I did kind of order them, but that order is sort of like fairly, fairly arbitrary. However, my top three books are definitely my top three books. At number three is A Passage North by Anouk Arupragasa. So this was shortlisted for the Booker Prize in 2021 which was how I came to read it. Um, it's set in Sri Lanka and we follow our main character on a train journey from the south of Sri Lanka to the north to attend the funeral of his a grandmother's carer. It's a very tight focus book, very reflective and introspective. We are in the character's head for most of the book. We hear him reflecting on a past relationship he's had. We hear him reflecting on war and trauma, but always at one step removed from him through other people's experience. The writing in this book was what absolutely made it for me. The writing was sublime. I adored the writing in this book. I know some people haven't quite got on with the book because yeah, not a lot does happen. But I loved it. There wasn't a page of this book that I did not adore. Um, and it's absolutely one of my favourite reads of the year. In at number two is a book which I have just reread. And that is Affinity by Sarah Waters. I love this book so much. I love Sarah Waters. I think she is one of my favourite authors. And Affinity is my favourite book of hers. I first read this, I think, five years ago and loved it and um, wanted to reread it to see if it lived up to my memories 
of it. I think that's the, always the fear when you reread a favourite book that you've maybe only read once. Um, will it be as good as you remember? And this absolutely was. So this is set in the 1870s and we follow Margaret, who is quite a well-off lady. Um, she has had some personal trauma issues in her life. She decides to go to um, befriend prisoners in a, in a women's prison. Um, there she meets Selina, who is one of the prisoners who has been imprisoned for, I think, fraud, maybe fraud and assault or something like that. Selina is a medium. And we, and we don't know whether or not Selina is, can be trusted or not, um, and neither does Margaret, but we see the connection between the two develop as the story goes on. And um, most of the book is written in diary format from Margaret's point of view, which really, really worked for me in terms of telling the story. You're really in Margaret's head, you're hearing her emotions. The writing in this book is wonderful. Um, we also get some diary entries from Selena, um, dating back, I think, a couple of years previous before she is in prison. So we see what led up to her being imprisoned. I love the setting of this book. I think the characters are really interesting. As I say, the writing is wonderful and oh, I just love it so much. There was some stuff that I had forgotten about actually since the first time I read it and there was one certain aspect of the plot which either I completely forgot about it or it went over my head the first time around. So I just, I just adored rereading this book so, so much. Highly recommend. And finally, in the number one spot, my favourite read of 2021 was The Death of Yvigoji by Akwaki Messi. I love this book so much. So this is a really quick read. I read this in like an afternoon. We follow, we know right from the start that Vivek OG has died. Their body is left wrapped up in I think a sheet at the front of their parents home and as we go through the book we find out what happened to them, how they died and what, what led up to that point. We hear from their family, their friends and in particular one of their cousins um, and this book is about identity and belonging and gender and sexuality and it's a wonderful wonderful book. It is heartbreaking in many ways but it's also kind of heartwarming too and I cried when I read this which really does not happen very often at all um, but oh, it's such a remarkable remarkable wonderful book. I've read three books by Akwaki Mezzi this year, Freshwater, Pet and Vivekoji. Vivekoji is my favourite, they're all brilliant books if you haven't read any Akwaki Imezi, please, if there's one thing you take from this video, go and read some Akwaki Imezi because I just think they are wonderful. So those are my favourite books of the year. Let me know down below what your favourite book is that you read in 2021. I hope you're all doing well and I'll speak to you all again very soon. Bye.